Welcome back guys. This is another video for our Transformers month and I am very, very excited to show you this guy. And I am also very sad to say that it's it's coming close to the end. We are getting to the end. This is the second to last video. We have one more video after this one and then it's all over and it just feels it feels weird because I actually don't want this to end because I've been having so much fun with this franchise that I just want to keep going. But enough of that. We're going to talk about a lot more what's coming up next in the future. Maybe some of you would like it, but some of you might. We'll see. Uh, but right now we're going to be taking a look at a figure. And today we're taking a look at a pretty decent figure. And you kind of you can kind of see his little, little, little thingy right here. That is because this is the Studio Series Bumblebee movie, Starscream. I have been loving these Bumblebee movie uh, characters just because they are based off of the, the G1 uh, cartoon with a huge modern look to them. And Starscream, I think is really good. I actually really like this figure. So comparing the Cybertronium modes to Starscream here, uh, we have looked at uh, Soundwave, we've looked at Shockwave, we've looked at Ravage. All of them have decent modes, kind of. Soundwave, not as much. I'm going to say this right here. This is probably the best Cybertronian mode that we have gotten from this these figures. This is beautiful looking, but we're going to take a little bit of a more closer look at them. Not side by side, because I do not feel like retransforming these guys. Um, but we, I'll have like pictures up of what they look like or you can go back to the videos and look at how they looked before But this is a cool one. This actually looks really really dope So I think that is gonna be it. We're gonna take a look at its beautiful packaging real quick The little inside of the box is gone because I had to rip that out uh, to get the instructions, but that was like Just stuffed in there but uh, it's probably in the trash now, but it was pretty much the exact same as everybody else's. They had the Cybertronian, the uh, Cybertron background uh, with the war going on. And you can look at the, uh, my uh, Shockwave review to see what it looked like before. But we're going to take a look at this guy. We're going to see how we like this dude. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Let's get right into it. All right. In terms of the actual packaging, it's pretty cool. Like I said, the background was of Cybertron. So there's... I'm, honestly, there's no need for me to show you that again, but it looks pretty cool. I really do like the image of Starscream right there. It looks really cool from both sides. I absolutely love that Starscream was in Bumblebee, even though he had no lines at all. Um, I think it's it's still pretty cool, but you can kind of see the alternate mode right there. You can see Bumblebee right there. It's standard box, really. just has Starscream on it, but I think it's still really, really cool. Uh, in terms of this alternate mode... It is a very cool mode. I actually really love this mode. Um, I'm going to have a picture because I'm not retransforming these guys. But I'm going to have a little picture of uh, Shockwave and Soundwave on the screen right now. And um, yeah, you can kind of see the comparisons with the Cybertronian modes. Uh, Ravage is just like a block, so there's really no point for me to show you that. But that's their modes. And this is Star Screams. Now I know that they actually had an actual reference to actually, um, you know, make it into an actual thing, unlike the other guys, which I'm pretty sure they just kind of like, you know, just pulled from the sky or something. But this thing looks so cool. I absolutely love it. It looks pretty much like its G1 counterpart, and uh, I just I absolutely love this thing. It feels very nice. Like it feels like it's not going to fall off. I think the only part that might fall off is this whole part here because this is his gun, but it's on there pretty nicely. What I love about this whole like gun piece at the bottom though is there's a little hole right here. So if you wanted to like a little stand, you can probably have it um, in like a flying pose, which I absolutely love that they do that. Um, I really do like the use of their guns. You have the null rays right here, which are on the side, and you have the main blaster right there, and it looks very nice from all angles. Like, it feels like it's supposed to look like this. It's very detailed. It's very panel-y. Uh, I love just all that they did with this thing. Uh, I'm going to try to, like, bring the light in a little bit closer so we can actually see what we're looking at, but you can see that this thing 
has just so much mechanical detail into it. I think the only ugly part might be this back section, but honestly, I don't really care. This whole mode, I think, is just beautiful all the way around. What I also love is that there's this whole, like, bottom piece here that you can handle, so it makes the swooshing around nice and fun, and I fucking love it. It's awesome. I absolutely love it. So, that is pretty much the entire mode itself. I'm going to transform this thing, and we'll see how it goes on camera. And here we have the robot mode. The transformation on camera is not bad. Um, I hope I did that part right. Good enough. The transformation on camera wasn't bad. Uh, usually I kind of struggle on the camera aspect, but that was honestly not as bad as I was uh, expecting. The, holy, the only part that I had trouble with was this whole little uh, uh, end piece part, but dang, this whole mode looks so cool i absolutely love this thing so in terms of the overall look of this figure it's not on par with uh uh shockwave the shockwave i think is still perfect because shockwave practically looks kibble free uh while starscream kind of has you know some bits and pieces here but you can see that starscream all the way around looks pretty much flawless but they both look really dope together, and having Soundwave in there as well, Soundwave is also a very nice robot mode, um, but I do think that there is a little bit more kibble on uh, Starscream, so that makes him a little less perfect, but I think that this mode is beautiful. Like, seeing this mode is absolutely, like, fantastic looking. I love everything about this figure. Um, again, the kibble is still kind of there, but it's, you know, honestly, I can kind of look past it. I think my favorite parts about this figure is this, these huge ass thrusters on the ends of his feet. I think that's just like really, really cool looking. Um, I love the blue, the red, and like the almost off white color scheme with the hints of yellow. I think that's awesome. The sculpting, the detailing looks so cool. It has so much mechanical detail on this thing that it just looks fantastic, and I absolutely love it. I love the Decepticon logos right there, um, which I think is really, really dope. Um, just overall, this whole thing looks awesome. I love the underside of the arm. I love how they use the gunmetal gray for this whole part here, and then it goes right onto blue. I think that's super, super nice. I love that. But that is pretty much the entire figure. It looks so cool. So getting a closer look at the uh, the face, the face looks menacing. Like, this face looks very, very uh, angry. Like, it looks like it wants to take control of the uh, Decepticons. Like, the, it's just so cool looking. Uh, you go down to the cockpit area. I think this is the only part that I might have a little issue with because there is just a very big difference compared to the cockpit mode. Uh, you have this whole yellow piece here 
but then you have this whole clear yellow piece right here which I do kind of like the detailing inside. I mean, there's not much, but it just looks like something's happening. But, you know, just it's a pretty big change from each other. So I just don't really care for that. But honestly, again, it doesn't really bug me. Um, I do love just overall, just all the detailing just looks so nice. Like I said, on the underside of the arms, I love because there's just so much detailing there. And I love that they use the gunmetal gray. I think that's really, really nice. I love these like shoulder thrusters here. I love these classic star screen like little uh, back pieces. I think that's pretty cool. Love these pieces as well. The feet I really do like. I love how just unique it looks and I love these thrusters like I said. Um, the Decepticon logos and the wings and how they made them I think is really, really nice. I think they did a fantastic job with this figure. And I just think it's really, really cool. The sucky thing is about this figure as well is that when it comes to the Null Rays, you can't really put them onto his arms. Like, they, they can't connect like they do with the G1 look. Um, if you wanted to put it on, this is pretty much as good as you're going to get. You use the little tab piece here, and you just slide it into his shoulder. But it's not a good fit, and it also just looks like shit. So, yeah, the best way to do it is just here. But he is not completely void of a weapon. He has this weapon here, which uh, pretty much just plugs right into his hand. You just roll the little peg up right there, and you just slide that into his arm. And it honestly looks pretty decent. I actually really do like it. Um, I just kind of, you know, I miss my little my little null rays. But it looks, it still looks really, really dope. I absolutely love just this whole mode. I think they did a fantastic job with this guy. So, taking off the weapon here, we're going to take a look at about the posability, which is pretty decent. He has some side to side at the head, which can look up that far and down that far. It, hardly anything. You could kind of fake one with, like, you know, kind of removing the chest a little bit. So, it kind of looks like he's looking up, but that's just kind of up to you. No head, no, just like, that's like the weakest up and down movement I've seen. Um, his arm can move out. He does have a rotation at the arm here. This, I don't think it counts, but it kind of is a hinge joint here. You can kind of get like a lower pose if you wanted it to, but I don't know. I'm sure you can do something with that in posability form, but uh, he has a swivel at the um, the uh, arm. He has a nice bend at the elbow, which is very, very nice. I think they did a fantastic job with that. Um, he sadly has no wrist swivel. Don't know why they do that. Uh, I think it's easy to do it, but, you know, whatever. He has a little bit of um, uh, swivel at the waist. Um, it helps a lot more when you take this little dick piece up, you move it up, and you just have, like, a nice, better swivel. I think that's pretty, pretty cool. Um, the leg can go up that far, and it also can go back that far, but it kind of hinders from the overall back piece that he's got here he's got a nice bend at the uh, knee he has some a little bit of up and down and he has a very very nice pivot so he can get some pretty wide stances with that and this is what fell off that um but overall it's not bad he does have some other uh joints as well he has a hinge joint at the wing part so you can kind of like you know move it about to there i think and then you can move it back that far um, he has a little bit of swivel here, and of course, that really doesn't do much for the robot mode. Again, on the other side, and that's pretty much all of his uh, articulation. So they did a pretty decent job with uh, the way this guy looks. So comparing him next to his G1 counterpart, I think that uh, these two look so cool. I also do have a tiny little star screen there, so there's that. There you go, there's my little, there's my tiny star screen collection. But having these two side by side looks really, really cool. I absolutely love how they did both of these figures. I think it's just, it's so cool just to see, you know, both of them side by side. Uh, seeing a cartoon version and the live action version together is always just so cool to see, uh, especially in figure form. And they did a fantastic job with these two. Um, out of the two that I like, I don't know. I think I would go with the G1 more, G1 one, G1 one more. Um, I think I like his alternate mode a lot better than this one, but not to say that this one's bad. This one's awesome and perfect. This one's also really good too. I just like, I, I think I'd have more fun transforming him and I've also had him the longest. So I guess that counts for something, but this figure 
is so amazing. I absolutely love it when it comes down to like everything. So Starscream is just one of the coolest. Um, when it comes to Soundwave, I think Soundwave is awesome because Soundwave is one of my favorite characters. Um, he is missing some parts here and there, but I think just overall they're they're really good. And then you get to Shockwave here, which I think is just beautiful. Uh, both all three of these figures are just awesome together. And this is what I call my um, Decepticon army for my Bumblebee collection. I am done collecting the Bumblebee Decepticons unless there's one Decepticon that I really do like. But this is it. This is my this is my team. I have Soundwave, Shockwave, and Starscream. Those were always the three that I always loved um, with my G1 little figures. Um, with the ones that kind of look like this. I have uh, all three of these guys. So it's just really cool to just have all three of them here. And here they are next to my little dudes that I always had as a kid. And just always had them as kind of like my, uh, my backups, you know. Megatron will always be my, my my biggest baddie, but if I needed some other like you know main bosses too to have them fight, these guys would always be it as well. So it's just cool to see them in bigger form. Uh, and also I have a little Ravage too, so I think that's pretty dope. Um, but yeah, it just it's so cool to actually see all three of my original little guys here that I always used to play with and I always had them as a team having them right here as well in like a bigger more modern form it's so cool if only i was a child again i would absolutely blow my mind uh it would have blown my mind to have these guys as a kid but other than that i think that's pretty much where we're gonna call it quits this has been so much fun i absolutely love it we have one more review which uh i'm just gonna put them right there just to kind of hint at who i'm it's not really a hint but it's going to be so cool to review him, but it's so cool to just have these three guys in hand. It was so much fun reviewing these Transformer figures. We have one more left, but that's pretty much it for this review. And I will see you guys um, in the title screen. I don't know why I was going to close it out. We got one more thing to do. And that is it. We have taken a look at a lot of Transformers figures this month. I am very, very happy that we actually got the privilege to, to look at these guys. And Starscream here is a really, really cool figure. I really do like this figure. Uh, I had a blast filming this review. It's been so much fun. Uh, but the figure itself is really, really cool. I think the sculpt work on both the um, uh, robot mode and the Cybertronium mode are beautiful. They did such an, a fantastic job with this mode and with the uh, robot mode. They both look so amazing. Uh, they have a huge modern look to them, uh, even though they're based off the uh, cartoon. And I just think it's awesome. Transforming this thing, um, I'm gonna be honest, I don't know how I did it on camera, but off camera, I actually enjoyed the process of doing this thing. I actually really enjoyed uh, transforming this guy into this mode. So I had a blast doing it. I love the feel. The feel of this mode is awesome. And I know I'm like really happy about this mode in particular and not the robot mode. It's mainly just because I have this mode in hand. But this mode feels nice. This feels awesome. Because of this whole like part here, this whole like bottom section, you can fit your hand around it and you can do some swooshing around and it's really cool. I absolutely love that. Um, and it just looks amazing. It feels really nice. It doesn't feel like it's going to fall apart. Same with the robot mode. The robot mode feels really good. It feels like it's not going to fall apart. It feels nice and, you know, put together. I think the only parts that I could complain about are the wings because when you do transform them, you know, they're kind of just like pegged in there. Uh, so when you transform them sometimes like I had an issue the very first time with one of the wings like popping off um but other than that I think it's really cool oh look at that it's like a that I don't I don't know I just, I'm having fun with this mode um but yeah I if I can have fun with the robot mode and the alternate mode they did a really good job with this figure and I just think that it feels awesome so um I already just talked about it a bit, but alternate mode it's beautiful. It's one of the coolest modes ever. This is 
extreme this is like ripped off ripped right out of the uh, g1 show uh they actually had a good reference trying to transform this thing because this looks exactly like it does in the movie because he does actually appear like this in the movie so they actually had something to go off of unlike starscream and shockwave because those were just kind of ideas I'm pretty sure they just pulled out of their head or maybe it was a concept art who knows but we never saw those in the movie this mode we actually did so uh I think all Overall, I love this thing. It's so cool. Starscream is probably the best one out of the three. Um, I think in terms of uh, the robot mode, or this alternate mode, I think it tops Shockwave and Soundwave and Ravage all together because this is beautiful. Uh, in terms of the robot mode, uh, I think it's probably second best, I think. Um, it's kind of hard to say. I think it's like up there... Um, with um, uh, a sound wave. Shockwave, I think, is like the best one out of all of them. Um, but I think it's pretty decent. A second or third, I'd have to like really, you know, study it just a little bit more. Uh, maybe when we bring the robot modes out here, uh, when I kind of put the robot modes side by side, I'll figure out maybe exactly what I'm feeling. But this is such an awesome mode. So I believe that Starscream in all of his treacherous glory, is getting a 4.9 out of 5. He is near perfect. There's a couple things that I just, that are not as good, uh, but I think that this guy is almost perfect, and I absolutely love this thing. So yeah, that is pretty much it. I am sad to say that we have one more review left until we are done with this month, but I wanted to take this time to show you guys just kind of give my thoughts on the Transformers movies because this month of June I have been nothing but Transformers. I have been watching the G1 show which I've been loving so far. I've been watching uh, listening to it at work and um, I've been uh, just kind of watching it here and there and I'm already on like season two. I've made it past Beast Wars season one. Um, I have just been all Transformers. I've been watching the movies and I've been actually playing one of the games too. Uh, and I just kind of wanted to talk about them real quick. So when it comes to the movies, um, I was never a fan of them. I remember when in 2007, when the very first Transformers movie came out, I was in theaters and all I really remember was Barricade interrogating Sam. <laughs> Are you username Ladies Man 217? I don't know what you're talking Are about. Are you username Ladies Man 217? That was the only thing that I ever remembered. And I just remember that we never really liked those movies because, I mean, to be honest, like, it, it's supposed to be something for kids. And these movies definitely not suitable for some kids, to be honest. Uh, there's a lot of scenes in there that are just kind of, okay, that's, why would I have my child watch that? But as an adult, just watching it for the hell of it and just having a good time with it, it's fun. They are actually fun movies. And I remember I, I did debate with one of my friends um, that the transfer was movie sucked. He absolutely loved them. And I was just like, no, they they suck. I can safely say now that they, they're okay. They're not bad. They don't suck, but they're not bad either. So the first Transformers movie, I think is pretty good. It's not bad. I really do like it. Um, I think my main problem with these Michael Bay Transformer movies is that Optimus Prime is a killing machine. This guy is a motherfucker. He, he's a fucking psychopath. Give me your faith. Like, there is no honor to his name. Like, there's, there's honor. Like, but he just, like... I, I don't know, just seeing Optimus Prime rip the head off of a uh, of another Decepticon is just, um, I don't know, it just doesn't seem right to me, you know? Um, that's I think that's just my main thing with these movies, is that Optimus Prime just is like this killing machine and um, does not show any remorse towards a Decepticon. Um and it's just, it's brutal on how he kills him too. So I, it's just interesting. But overall, 
I really do like this. It's not a bad movie. I enjoyed this one a lot. I would watch this one over and over again if I could. Um, in terms of the second movie, definitely the weakest one out of the three. Um, I think that uh, once you get past the beginning and head more towards the end, then it actually starts to get a little bit better because I hated the college scene. I could not watch it because I was just wanting to kill myself the whole time. But once you get to the end and... Um, you know, I actually get to the good stuff, then it actually becomes pretty decent to watch, and I actually really do enjoy it. Dark of the Moon, I think, is my favorite one out of the three, because it's just so much fun. I actually really like how they did this one. Um, Megatron's design is one of my favorite designs in this movie, and um, I just, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, I don't care for... Um, most kind of the action the action's fine i actually really do like it some parts you know with all three of these movies there are just parts where it just feels very overwhelming because the designs of these transformers are pretty cool but half the time they just look like a bunch of piles of metal just together and then there's like an explosion in the background and the camera's just like whooshing around and it's hard to even tell who the hell's who in most of these things but it's still a fun movie. I, I did enjoy this one, except for Soundwave. Fuck Soundwave. I did not like I did not like Soundwave. Um, it's cool that Frank Walker voiced him, but yeah, it's whatever. Age of Extinction can go fuck itself because I do not like this movie at all. Um, it's not fun. I did not have a good time watching this movie. It had me in like the first like 20 minutes, maybe. Because you know, the story itself with the humans actually seemed kind of decent and tame. Um, but it was so boring. Like, it was boring as, but at least with the Shia LaBeouf ones, is, it, is that how you actually pronounce his name? I've been pronouncing his name like that for so long, but in terms of his movies, at least he was whack. At least he had a comical element to him that actually kept him interesting, especially in Dark of the Moon where he just kicks the shit out of his car. That is one of the best scenes from the movie so far, but that is that's pretty much that. Uh, the this is just so boring. I, I can't with it. I had to fast forward the action scenes because of how fucking boring this movie is. Galvatron sucks. What the fuck was Galvatron? Uh, Lockdown was pretty cool. That was the only cool part. I hate this movie. This is the worst Transformer movie ever. I remember watching this as a kid and I fell asleep to it. Watching it now, I wanted to kill myself and not watch this movie because this was awful. This was an absolute disgrace of a movie. I did not like this movie, and I'm glad they're done with the Michael Bay movies. As cool as the first three more were, I don't think they're going to top those anymore. Bumblebee, one of my favorite Transformer movies. This is the best Transformer movie all time. I love the, uh, the Cybertron war scenes. I love Bumblebee and... Uh, uh, who's the character's name? Charlie. I love Bumblebee and Charlie. They are both so awesome. It's like this whole Iron Giant storyline, kind of. And it's just, they're so cool. I absolutely love their movie. Um, seeing Blitzwing was kind of cool. The two Decepticons are cool. Um, John Cena, he's always cool. It's one of my favorite Transformer movies. Rise of the Beast, though, is a pretty decent one. It's definitely, like, top two. It's in my second place. But, I don't know, there's something about this movie that I'm missing. I wish that it had the action like this one had. No, it'd probably be Dark, Dark of the Moon because that's kind of the closest one. I wish it had kind of the action that this one had and, you know, the story care development like Bumblebee had. And also, you know, don't make Optimus Prime want to rip off the head of Scourge. I did not care for that part. Um, but overall... It's an okay movie. It's not bad. I still like it. Um, the human characters are pretty good. I actually really do like Noah. Noah's probably the coolest character. Uh, he's probably right next to uh, Charlie from Bumblebee. But the other girl, I don't remember her name, but she kind of sucked. Like, what the fuck was the point of her being there? There was no point to her be there. The whole purpose of her being there was completely shot down because they destroyed the keypad anyway. So what was the point of having her there in the first place? So it should have just been Noah and that that's it. I'm 
that would have been fine. I would have absolutely loved that. Maybe add his little brother there too. I don't know. But I did kind of like it. It was a pretty good one. I did like the Maximals. Those were pretty cool. Even though Cheetor and Rhinox had like three seconds of screen time, that it was okay. Um, I think the biggest thing that I don't care for is maybe their designs when they're in robot mode because they're... Optimus's design from robot mode to uh, gorilla mode kind of looks the same because the color scheme is like the exact same. So it's kind of hard to, to tell. But anyways, that's kind of like my only complaint. Unicron being there was really cool. Even though they probably should have saved it for a little later down the line, it was still kind of cool. The whole G.I. Joe thing is kind of neat, but I don't really care for G.I. Joe as much. This game, I've been playing my ass off on this game because I have been, it's been so much fun to play. There are some frustrating bits, but this game is like peak. I love this game. I never played this before. And I've always kind of wanted to uh, until I actually started getting into Transformers and seeing the games and stuff. I want to play the War for Cybertron's games. Uh, that's one of my top ones. But these, this one is is really cool. I, I absolutely love this one. But yeah, that's kind of what I just wanted to talk about. Just to waste time. Um, that is, that's pretty much it. But Transformers is so cool. I love the movies. Meeting Megatron and Optimus this month as well for Transformers Month was amazing. I absolutely loved it. These figures have been so cool and I have more coming in the mail, which means that Transformers Month might be continuing into J July. And I hope you guys are okay with that because I've just been loving this Transformers stuff that I just want to keep going for at least as long as I'm interested in it at, as as of right now. Um, I have a lot of figures coming in. I have another Optimus Prime coming in. I have Megatron from Dark of the Moon. I have uh, Starscream. I have other figures that I have bought recently. I have Cheetor. I have uh, RC. I have other figures that I'm planning to get as well. And I just really want to continue into July. Maybe it's not going to be as big as this month was. I might not do nine videos. I might just do normal Monday videos. Uh, but I'm, I think I'm still going to go um, whole on Transformers route. But that's pretty much all I have to say. I hope you guys are okay with that, uh, with doing more Transformers. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all I got to say. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys have had a beautiful time watching this time. I don't know what that meant, but I hope you guys had fun watching this. We have one more review and that is going to be uh, kicking off or kind of ending this entire Decepticon Bumblebee. Uh, um, what, what do I got here? My, my Decepticon army for my Bumblebee display. And that is the concept art Megatron. I hope that you guys are excited for this one. This will be at the end of the month, and I'm very excited to show you this one because there is a lot of cool things to do with this guy, and oh, I'm, I'm just excited to show you guys this one, and I hope you're excited too, but for now, I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I will see you guys in the next one.